Piyaka Nirandara, or also known as Pier, is a senior at Bangkok Padana School, the author of The Mermaid Apprentices and the Nymph Treasury. Her debut novel was published in English when she was only 15 years old. She sold over 20,000 20, copies and is set for publication in March 2012 in Italy. Today she will be talking about her work as brand ambassador for the Bangkok Metropolitan Campaign or Bangkok Read for Life in association with UNESCO. Please give a warm round of applause for Pierre. Hi, um, my name is Pierre, as you've heard, and I'm a senior at Bangkok Patna School. I write uh, children's novels under the name of Pieretta Dawn. So here are the two covers. The first one is called The Mermaid Apprentices and the second one is called The Nymph Treasury. Um, they are under uh, the Interspecies Trilogy and I wrote the, uh, the manuscripts in English um, and they were translated into Thai by Ajahn Sumali who translated the Harry Potter series. So I'm here to talk to you about my journey, which began with my love for many things. Um, specifically, I loved traveling. I love to travel. I love to go to um, lots of countries. I've been to, I think, about 40 countries. And um, traveling was mostly my inspiration. It drove me to want to tell these stories, to want to transport my readers into these exotic locations that I've been to. Because I know not everyone will get the chance to go to go to those places and I wanted to give them the chance. It led to me wanting to be creative. I like to use the analogy that my um, head is something like a cooking pot and every single thing that I've experienced, every person I've met, every sight I've seen comes into this cooking pot. Each bit of it is an ingredient and you stir it around and out comes my book or my writing or what I wish to convey. So when I was um, six to seven years old, I actually wanted to write my first book. At that time, I was really inspired by Disney's Little Mermaid and by traveling to the sea a lot because we live in Thailand. There are lots of beaches around and I wanted to write a book about mermaids. However, at that time, my English um, and my Thai, both of the languages, definitely weren't good enough and I kind of failed at it and just pushed the project aside. Then I came along and wanted to be um, a paleontologist. I wanted to go dig around for dinosaur bones. Although this might have been a complete misconception of the film The Land Before Time, and as I'm sure many of you have seen it before. So my mom took me to um, Galassin, which is in the northeast of Thailand, to dig for real dinosaur bones. And although it was really cool, I realized it's not really what I love. So then I decided, hey, I want to become an astronaut. I want to be the first, wo um, the first Thai woman in space or something. So again, mom took me to a space camp, which um, a NASA space camp for kids in Alabama in the States. And there, everything was going really well. I really loved the idea of it until they showed us a video of the Challenger exploding. And then I realized that I didn't really want to die in space. Then I realized um, again that, hey, I still loved to create things, I still loved um, lots of art forms, and that was when I picked up the Harry Potter series. Um, I remember we were doing a project in school and we started, a, um, the teacher gave us an extract of I think the second book, and after I read it I realized, oh my gosh, books aren't actually that daunting at all. Normally uh, some Thai people have this misconception that thick books are meant to use for like sleeping or for pillows or you know, they're just small little words crammed into pages, but that's actually not true at all. So you could say that Harry Potter was um, the Kickstarter for me. What, um, it was a, a bit of a revelation and it allowed me to travel into a different world, that thick books are fun too and that they're not just for sleeping on. So this is actually my copy of the first Harry Potter book. You can see how worn and torn it is and I've read it dozens of times and it made me realize that I actually really, really like to write. At the age of um, 12, I um, had the idea to write my own series. And at the age of 13, I started planning my trilogy, um, book one, two, and three. At the age of 14, I started writing the first book and I was finished within a year. So 
I sent off the manuscript to Nanmi Books, um, one of the top publishers in Thailand for children's books, and uh, who did the translation of Harry Potter, and I ended up getting published with them. Um, so it was really, really cool process because I got to learn a lot about it. And right now, there's actually a cartoon version of book one. Book two is also out, and we've sold um, the rights to Italy to um, a company who the company who published the Twilight series in Italy. Uh, it's, I think it's called something like Apprendista Serena, and you can actually find the Italian version on Amazon. What I learned was the importance of literature. That it started as something that was a personal hobby to me, something that I did in my free time or I, I really loved, but it turned into something so much more meaningful than I could ever have imagined. Because the more books I saw, the more I learned, and the more I realized. By participating in book fairs, like there's actually one going on this week, I've gotten to see the attitude of Thais towards reading. Um, a few years ago, I was in New York and I went to um, uh, a book event where Owen Colford, the author of the Artemis Fowl series, was there. And I met him and I was completely starstruck. And there were tons of people in a huge auditorium just waiting to see him. And then I realized that the attitude in Thailand is really, really different. When the seventh Harry Potter book came out, people were lining up around the blocks um, around the world, in Europe, in America, in uh, the US, the UK. They were all lining up to see it. And then we have Thailand, where in these, um, in these events, we have to literally beg people to buy books. We have to ask them. We have to, I've seen my publishers adopt so many marketing campaigns and marketing techniques from dressing up in hilarious costumes to shouting at the top of their voices and just almost begging people to buy these books. You get the common complaints from people that um, books are too expensive. I was at an event and I was um, trying to promote the books and there was this old man who came up to me and said, I don't understand why you're doing this. And I said, what do you mean what are we doing? And he says, well, you want us to buy books, yet you set up the prices to be so expensive. How do you expect us to afford it? And he said something like despicable. And that just really struck me that people would actually think that of publishers, that they're all in it for the money. From my experience, what I've known, if you're looking for the money, you don't go into the publishing industry. Previous years, Thai statistics have shown that Thais read an approximately five lines per year. Although some question the validity of these statistics, it's pretty worrisome. And it's, it troubles me that our country, although the literacy rates are high, people don't have a positive attitude towards books. So what is the importance of literature? The obvious is that it helps improve your spelling, your grammar, your language. Like, um, I remember when I started reading, um, my mom would underline words that I didn't understand, and she would help me open a dictionary and look up the meanings. So I definitely learned from there. But it also helps preserve the thinking patterns and the societal norms of that current society. Especially um, with classic literature, it allows you a glimpse into history or to learn about old civilizations. It's also food for thought, and it fuels your creative mind. It allows you to have a more open mind, and it allows for your own personal growth. It expands your learning, and for me, I think literature is knowledge. So um, a few days ago, I stumbled across an essay, and it's called Reasons to Date an Illiterate Girl. You can see here, it says, Don't date a girl who reads because the girl who reads has spun out the account of her life, and it is bursting with meaning. She insists that her narratives are rich, her supporting cast colorful, and her typeface bold. Essentially, it's talking about why you shouldn't date an um, illiterate girl because she's too good for this guy. And at the end it says, you will accept nothing less than passion and perfection and a life worthy of being storied. And then there was a response to this, written by another person. It says, Fail her because the girl who reads knows that failure always leads to the climax. That all things will come to an end. That you can always write a sequel. That you can begin again and again and again and still be the hero. That life is meant to have a villain or two. Girls who read understand that people, like characters, develop. Except in the Twilight series. And I showed my English teacher this and she absolutely loved it. Date a girl who reads because you deserve a girl who can give you the most colorful life imaginable. If you want the world and the worlds beyond it, date a girl who reads. 
or better yet, date a girl who writes. So that part really spoke to me. And um, I found that I related so much to this piece because I was always trying to find a life worthy of being storied. And that's actually my goal. Like, you know, you get that question, what is the meaning in life? Some people say it's 42, some people say it's something else. For me, it's to live a life worthy of becoming a book or worthy of being told that you live with no regrets and you live an, an adventure. And I think a quote from Mark Twain really sums this up pretty well. It says, throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Reading for me really makes you want to do this. So now, what do I do? With this, I go around, I tour schools on the importance of literature. I've been to um, Concordian, I've been to um, Shrewsbury, um, NIST, uh, lots of Thai schools as well, um, traveling the countryside to go to hard to reach places and try to promote them, um, promote the importance of literature and promote them to write. I also speak at UNESCO symposiums um, and I go to events mostly as a motivational speaker. I'm currently the brand ambassador, one of the brand ambassadors for the Bangkok Metropolitan's campaign of Bangkok Read for Life um, in association with UNESCO, which goes around and tries to promote literature in Thailand and also donate books you know, and money to charities uh, to try and promote this in underprivileged schools. You're also probably wondering, well, you do all this stuff, but what can I do to help? What can I do to help um, this cause or you know, to, to go around? Or do I have to go give books? Do I have to read more personally? Well, first of all, you can read. Perhaps you can even write. You can also keep an open mind to all the books that you see and all the, um, you can learn new languages to expand the knowledge that you can take up or that you can read because if we can, uh, if we know English, if we know Thai, if we know Mandarin, if we know French and Spanish, you can read all the books from all these different languages and acquire more knowledge. You can also do charity work such as donating books. Like if you have some, lots of old books at home um, that you had as a kid and you want to give them away, you can also do that. Or you can donate money to libraries or um, public projects that um, hope to support this cause. Yeah, that's me meeting the princess. Um, and she also, uh, I was having a conversation with her and she said that we really, really need to push Thai ch um, kids to read or we're going to lose our culture, our history and our language. Literature allows us to learn about our past and our potential future. It allows us to observe our flaws and our strengths, to study different cultures and different societies. It all, uh, also allows us to creatively think and to critically think, to travel to any place at any time. It allows us to journey into the great minds of philosophers and maybe just glimpse a part of their genius and take it into our own. It allows us to expand imagination, and to perhaps even understand life or see the world from a different perspective. Ultimately, um, there's a quote from C.S. Lewis who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia. He says, Lit literature adds to reality. It does not simply describe it. It enriches the necessary competencies that daily life requires and provides. And in this respect, it irrigates the deserts that our lives have already become. And that's why we must preserve it. Thank you.